Greetings, it is I, the Great One himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, CYNLIBSOC.com, here with an anarchy moment. Gonna drop some CLSology on ya. I just finished listening to a Stefan Molyneux podcast, listening to it on YouTube actually, called The Philosophy of Television, and I'm going to put the link to it in the show notes for this episode. This was another example of Stefan's sheer brilliance. Right on the tail end of, I, I watched another Stefan video before this about moral decay, in which he illustrated what to me is his more annoying side. He went on this rant, well, not rant, he wasn't ranting actually, he, it was Stefan, he was being very reasoned. Though he does rant occasionally, when Stefan rants, it's actually really good. If you have not listened to the Stefan Molyneux interview on Michael W. Dean's now defunct show called Anarchy Gumbo, go find that podcast. Look for Google for Michael W. Dean, Anarchy Gumbo, Stefan Molyneux, find the podcast. It's it's Stefan Molyneux at his most brilliant. The entire interview is amazing. Because Michael W. Dean is really good at asking people non-softball questions and questions that allow people to really expand things. Anyhow, in the context of that interview, Stefan goes on this rant about how society better shape the fuck up. And he uses... A lot of people think Stefan doesn't use bad language. Stefan uses bad language when he wants to. Not all the time, like I do. And I'm pretty sure, if my memory serves me correct, and I could be wrong, but I do believe he actually does use the word fuck more than once. He goes on this rant about how society better shape the fuck up before his daughter has to go out there and interact with society because you know he's embarrassed by society and you're all a bunch of fucking idiots and his daughter is already smarter than you are, and things along that line. I'm heavily paraphrasing. But the point is, it is a, it is a, a brilliant Stefan Molyneux rant where he just unleashes with incredible brain power. So anyhow, I listen to this other one where he's whining about Bill Clinton getting his cock sucked and how society is going to shit, and then he transi- transitions this into how you know, people need to wake up and realize that Obama lied about Obamacare when he said that you could keep your health care and you can't, and how people really need to wake up. And the reason I felt Stefan was just whining about this is because I just want to ask him, Stefan, what planet do you live on in which you think the 99% are going to wake up and acknowledge that the phrase, if you like your health care plan, you can keep it, was a lie. I mean, on what planet do you live where you think people are going to be able to pull their heads out of their asses enough to respond to the fact that a politician has lied to them? People just accept that politicians lie. And the idea that anybody is going to get outraged over a politician lying is as ridiculous as the idea that people will get outraged over the government killing people, or get outraged over taxation, or get outraged over wars, or get outraged over the fact that the United States has the highest prison population on the planet, yada, yada, yada. Nobody is going to get outraged over these things, Stefan. The people in the United States and in Western culture as a whole are so fucking brain dead. They're so fucking brain dead. As I have said over and over and over, as long as they have alcohol and television, you can get away with anything. The government could send armed groups of people out into the street to kill Jews. And as long as alcohol and television are freely available, no one would give a shit. The government could send armed groups of people out into the streets to rape women. As long as you've got television and alcohol, nobody would give a shit. The government could send armed people out into the streets to break into people's homes in case they might have drugs in there and kill old people and shoot their dogs. 
And as long as there's alcohol and television, nobody will give a shit. The government of the United States could maintain the largest prison population on the entire planet Earth. And as long as you have alcohol and television, nobody will give a shit. The government of the United States could kill people who are driving to a wedding in their automobiles in foreign countries with flying robots. And as long as people have alcohol and television, nobody will give a shit. Nobody, Stefan, nobody, and by nobody I mean the 99%, yes, there's the 1% of us out there who don't have our heads up our asses. We're the exception to the rule, not the rule. Nobody in the general voting public will ever give a shit as long as they have television and alcohol. And neither of those things are going anywhere. So then I listened to Stefan Molyneux's podcast, the philosophy of television. Whoa. <laughs> and that's why I've, and I mean, this is why I've always said as long as people have alcohol and television, the state can get away with anything. And in this podcast, The Philosophy of Television, Stefan Molyneux lays out exactly why television numbs the brain, destroys critical thinking skills, and of course, always manages to present the state as an enlightened state. Not state as in the state, but enlightened state as in state to be in. A state for society to be in. It's almost an hour long, and it will be one of the best used hours of your life. Instead of watching some shit on TV, listen to this podcast. I want to touch on one thing he talked about. Having been, I've worked for the government. I was in the military for three years, although I consider that slightly different than working for the government in the sense of like government employees, like civilian employees. I worked for Colorado State University, government institution, for eight years, and I have worked for government operated theaters. I'm trying to think if I'd done anything else government employed that I've forgotten about. I think that's it. And I've always said, as have many others, that government employees are people who cannot get jobs in the private sector. And in my mind, and perhaps in your mind, and perhaps in the minds of other people who have said this, when we say that, I know when I've said that, I've usually, in my mind, my source of that was that, well, these people aren't smart enough to get jobs in the public sector. And listening to this podcast, Stefan has... So, listen to this. See, this is something those of you who are statist will never experience in your life, is progression in your thinking, progression in your understanding of the world, right? I've talked about this before and people say to me, I've been a liberal Democrat all my life. It's like, great, you still have the same worldview you had when you were eight years old. Yes, you should definitely be voting. You should be making political decisions that affect everybody on the planet Earth. You have the fucking worldview of an eight-year-old. Oh, yes. Yes, democracy. So fucking wonderful. Gotta love democracy. So I'm talking, I'm talking about something here that most of you will not be able to relate to, and that's called a progression of worldview. I always said people who work for the government can't get jobs in the private sector. And in my brain, the reason I was formulating that was because, well, they're not intelligent enough to get a job in the public sector, in the free market. And now I recognize there's more to it than that because Stefan touched in this with a brilliant analysis in this podcast where he spoke about some TV show called The Big Bang Theory that I'm not familiar with. I've never seen it, but apparently everybody there works for the government. And I realize now how this ties into the reality. He also talks about uh, brilliantly, brilliantly, teaching and teachers and you know how teachers always tell this lie about how they care about the children 
and Stefan takes the lie of, I'm a teacher because I care about the children, and just fucking destroys it so brilliantly that I'll just have to talk about that separately. Oh, he just brilliantly destroys that. So based on what Stefan has said, and I'm going to develop this for you, I recognize now it's not because they lack intelligence. Here's the thing. Think about this. So, for example, when I worked at Colorado State University, I worked for Department of Lab Animal Research. Basically, as I've said before, we tortured and murdered small animals and called it science. And some of it was legitimate science. Some of the things we did there was what I would consider legitimate science. A lot of it was simply killing animals so that people could do a, write a thesis and get their PhD, which I found to be excessively disgusting. You know, killing an animal for a reason, I'm okay with. Killing an animal, well, okay, there, there are, you're always killing an animal for a reason. Even if you don't have a reason, you still have a reason. It's called insanity because as I've recently discussed, if you do things and you don't know why you did them, that's called insanity. Or you're a religious prophet. My train of thought is derailing. Give me a second to gather things back together. And take a drink of coffee. Okay. Working at CSU in the Department of Lab Animal Resources, the people who work there essentially had no customers outside of the university. So everybody who did research there also worked for the university as professors, as researchers, whatever. So at least all these people here who are within this status system, all of the funding that came into this little cosmos of lab animal resources came from the state, right? Very little, now some, some of the research we did was actually privately funded. Most of it was funded by the state, by research grants, so forth and so on. And then of course everybody who worked there was paid by the state. And so looking at it in the light of everything Stefan said in this brilliant podcast, it's not so much that the people there were not smart enough to get jobs in the public sector. Many of these people were, in fact, excessively brilliant. I mean, some of these researchers were very smart. Very, they're very educated. Remember, as I've said before, there's a difference between intelligence, education, wisdom and common sense. You can have any of those four without the other ones. So these people were very educated and perhaps intelligent. But looking at it now, I recognize that the thing, based on my personal experience working in government institutions, isn't that people who work for the government aren't smart enough or intelligent enough are not intelligent or educated enough to work in the public sector. The thing that more than anything is keeping them down is that they are emotionally and socially retarded. Stefan talks about how in the Big Bang Theory TV show, all of these characters are, simple, are essentially emotionally retarded. They cannot cope with other people. And as I think about it, it's, it's the same thing in my experience. Working at LAR, most of the people there, if they had to go out and get a job in the public sector where you actually had to have customers and interact with other people and be nice to other people, they'd never make it. Here's the, cli here's the guy I've talked about many times. There's the one guy and he was older. He was past retirement age. He had a 
bad, he has a bad leg, he walks with a cane, and he has black skin. So, so I've referred to him in the past as the trifecta. He's old, he's black, and he's a cripple. So he's the affirmative action trifecta. Three times, the entire department had to go to sexual harassment training because of him. I mean, you're standing right there. We're in the lobby. There's our receptionist sitting there at her desk. There is a female in the lobby. I witnessed this with my own eyes. There's a female in the lobby who worked for one of the investigators. There's him standing there. There's me, some other people. And he looks at her and he says something along the lines of, wow, that's a really nice ass you have. I'd like to smack that. Boom. Socially retarded. No fucking clue. Now, I'm not saying I've never told a girl you have a nice ass, I'd like to smack it, but I generally don't open with that. I, I've said that to women that I know. I don't say that to women I've never met before in my life. I don't say it on the premise of where I'm working. I don't say it while I'm on the clock. And I don't say it to somebody who is... She's kind of a customer. She's not really a customer. I mean, so again, in, in a real environment, a free market environment, if you take him and you put him, say, in a restaurant and he works at the restaurant and he says that to a customer, a paying customer, whole different ball game. Here, of course, she's kind of a paying customer because she worked for an investigator who is doing research in our facility. But even then, the investigator's research money that he's paying us comes from a federal grant. So you see, there's no real customer here. It's just the state dumping money into things. And so because it's a statist environment and because he is a trifecta, he can get away with that kind of behavior. And he never has to become, and he still works there, of course, he never has to become emotionally mature enough to interact with a woman without making a comment about how he'd like to smack her ass. And so he remains emotionally retarded. And that's why people who work for the government cannot exist in the free market in the public sector because there it's not so much I recognize now it's not so much the intelligence I'm not saying all of them are educated and intelligent believe me there are a lot of people working for the government that are too stupid to rub two sticks together but there are a lot of brilliant people working for the government so why are they working for the government not in the public sector because they're emotionally retarded because they cannot coexist with other people if you took this guy, if you took Mr. Trifecta and put him in a place where he had to work with other people and he had to work to the satisfaction of an employer and he had to create happy clients and he only got paid if people came in and paid the company business, yada, 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 he wouldn't last a fucking week because he's emotionally retarded. He doesn't know how to interact with other humans. But of course, in the state system, instead of him being fired, because they're not going to fire him because he's a trifecta, the entire department had to go to sexual harassment training. Because why it's the state, you can't single out the emotionally retarded person and say to him, hey, look, you know, this is a university and we're tolerance and diversity and open-mindedness and inclusive and we believe in women's rights and we're opposed to sexual harassment, so we're going to fire you. No, 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 of course not. Because women are less important than trifectas. I also talked about before how a person who worked there who was handicapped, he was he something was he had some kind of brain chemistry thing. I could if I when I say he's retarded, he actually was retarded in the sense of he had some kind of brain chemistry imbalance. He would occasionally have seizures, and one day he went and hit. He made a fist and punched one of the female employees. She went to HR and HR says, well, hell no, we're not going to fire him. He's handicapped. So again, for those of you who are women and you think that universities are this place of enlightenment and safety and diversity for women, I mean, you're clearly fucking stupid. Because I can tell you from working at CSU, women are not the top of the totem pole. Handicapped people and trifectas are the top of the totem pole. If a woman would have hit a handicapped person, she'd be gone. A handicapped person hits a woman, mm, we're not firing him. She eventually did have him fired. She went all the way to the state of Colorado Attorney General. That's what it took because Colorado State University wasn't going to do anything.
just like Colorado State University would not do anything about the trifecta repeatedly engaging in what CSU considered to be sexual harassment. And we can debate that. I mean, I personally, you know, if you're a woman and the worst thing that's ever happened to you in your life is that somebody told you you have a nice ass and they'd like to smack it, I mean, whoo, they're talking about some first world upper middle class white girl problems. Yes, I've been traumatized. A man told me I have a nice ass and he'd like to smack it. Meanwhile, in Muslim countries, people are being murdered by flying robots. But gosh, you fucking upper middle class white girls in North America, you sure do have it hard, don't you? <laughs> I said hard, yeah.